Their sport pilots and private pilots included spend a lot of time flying in uncontrolled airports and airspaces and a lot of times kind of tend to avoid busier airspaces in the U.S. The ability to fly in more complex airspace will make you not only a confident and competent pilot, but give you more options as a pilot. Back on tube of whiskey, traffic, eight mile final citation, one way, two left line of You're in a contact, two miles northwest of Eva, and then we proceed to the pier. Now, number two, Bravo Whiskey, can you make sure to approach? zero at one zero, runway two left, take the takeoff. This video is not meant to be an all-encompassing training video. Today we're just going to cover a couple highlights so you can look at this as more of an outline, just breaking it down for sport pilots specifically, and private pilots may find this review helpful. The Icon A5 is an LSA and we have a lot of sport pilots who fly our aircraft. There are a couple limitations that do apply to sport pilots specifically, including in busy airspace. Besides the limitations that a sport pilot can't fly at nighttime, cannot operate in class alpha airspace, and can't fly higher than 10,000 feet MSL or 2,000 feet AGL, whichever one is higher. They also need an endorsement in order to fly in class Bravo, Charlie, or Delta airspace. In order to get this endorsement, they need to first find an instructor who's able to offer ground training. The ground training must include radio communication, navigation, as well as the complexities of the different types of airspace. Once the instructor finds that they're proficient on the ground, they'll take them up for a flight, which is going to include a local class, either Bravo, Charlie, or Delta airspace with a controlled tower. They need to complete three takeoffs and three landings to a full stop, all three within the pattern. This could take one flight, this could take multiple flights, depends on the complexity of the airspace as well as the pilot's proficiency. Another limitation for sport pilots is they always need at least three statute miles of visibility in order to operate, and they have to be able to maintain visual reference to the ground at all times. If you're in an airspace that allows special VFR for a private pilot, the requirement is you need one statute mile of visibility and to be able to maintain clear of clouds. If you are a light sport pilot, you always have that three statute mile limitation of visibility. So you actually need three statute miles of visibility and to be able to remain clear of clouds in order to request special VFR. And as far as the VFR minimums go for each airspace, Class Bravo, you need three statute miles of visibility and you have to remain clear of the clouds. Class Charlie as well as Class Delta, they have the same VFR minimums for both airspaces. You just have to maintain cloud clearance of 1,000 feet above the clouds. 500 feet below and being able to maintain 2,000 feet horizontally from them, as well as that three statute miles of visibility. Requesting permission to enter Class Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. Start with Class Bravo because that's a little bit more complicated and that's the one that people get a little bit more intimidated by. In order to enter a Class Bravo, you have to receive a clearance. They'll respond back with your full call sign, saying that you are cleared to enter the Class Bravo, They'll also give you a heading as well as an altitude. You'll have to respond back to ATC, repeating the entire clearance back to them. There won't be any abbreviations. There's a couple different ways to transit in and around the class Bravo. The first way is flyaways, which typically route you around or underneath the Bravo. So you aren't actually entering the Bravo, therefore you don't need an ATC clearance. There's also VFR transition routes through the Bravo. Uh, the VFR transition routes, you will need an ATC clearance and they will be taking you through the Bravo at a very specific altitude as well as heading. A lot of Bravos also have corridors, which is essentially a tunnel through the Bravo. You don't need an ATC clearance, but there's typically a discrete squat code as well as a frequency that you make position reports on in order to transit this Bravo. You're not officially in the Bravo, you're in Class Echo transiting through the Bravo. In Los Angeles, we call this the special flight rules, and that's probably the most popular way to cross over LAX. LAX special flight rules, Icon 632, Bravo Whiskey, 4,500 feet just north of Torrance. Going to be turning to join the LAX special flight rules northbound in route to Santa Monica. Special flight rules. Northwesterly bound, it's 4,500 feet typically squawk 1201, and you make all position reports on 128.55. Uh, and this is notated on the TAC. 
Special flight rules, Icon 632, Pebble Whiskey, 4,500, directly over the center of Elliott, about to be approaching the north runway, northwestbound, and right to Santa Monica, special flight rules. If you don't want to use a flyaway, a corridor, or a VFR transition route, you can always request a clearance through the Bravo. Just remember, you need to actually hear the words, your full call sign, you are cleared through the Bravo and get that altitude as well as that heading. LAX Special Flight Rules, Icon 632, Bravo Whiskey, 4,500, exiting the Special Flight Rules to the Northwest. I'll be descending over Santa Monica to 3,500, last call, Special Flight Rules. In order to enter a class Charlie, you need to establish two-way radio communication. Two-way radio communication is going to be the tower responding back with your full call sign. For example, you contact the tower, they respond back with your full call sign but tell you to stand by. You still have permission to enter that class Charlie airspace. However, they respond back just aircraft calling standby. That does not establish two-way radio communication and you need to wait Maybe try again a little bit later before you enter the class trial. Socal approach, good morning. Icon 632, Bravo Whiskey, 3,500, about five miles north of the Huntington Beach Pier, inbound to John Wayne, information Yankee. 632, Bravo Whiskey, squad 0210. 0210, 632, Bravo Whiskey. Number two, Bravo Whiskey, radar contact, two miles northwest of Eva and Emmy, proceed to the pier. Are you a Berku? Uh, I'm an icon. Uh, it's a light sport amphibious to Bravo with and proceeding direct to the pier. Sounds good, thanks. Murmur 2 Bravo Whiskey, contact tower 126.8, so long. 126.8 to Bravo Whiskey, have a nice day. Yes. John Wayne Tower, Icon 632, Bravo Whiskey, 3,500, a mile north of the pier, inbound with Yankee. Icon 632 Bravo Whiskey, John Wayne Tower, proceed in. Direct numbers, runway uh, 2 left for now. Direct numbers 2 left, beginning VFR descent 2 Bravo Whiskey. Icon 2 Bravo Whiskey, uh, for traffic, uh, start a northbound turn, northeastbound turn, cross over the tower at or above 1,300 for right traffic, runway 2 right. All right, turning northeastbound, and I'll cross over the tower 1,300 and make right traffic for runway 2 right, 2 Bravo Whiskey. One Mike Bravo, South Coast Plaza. For one Mike Bravo, landing hell stream will be at your owner is. Traffic will cross above the eastbound 1300 restricted icon. Stop the one Mike Bravo, then. Icon 2 Bravo, Whiskey, caution with turns in the arriving golf stream, runway 2 right, clear to land number 1, wind 05013, gust 19er. Clear to land 2 right, caution with turbulence 2 Bravo, Whiskey. Three, 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 Papa, you're going to follow an right, icon uh, turning uh, right base to final for runway 2 right. Icon 2 Bravo Whiskey, start your base please for runway 2 right. Turning base 2 right, 2 Bravo Whiskey. Wind 05011, gust 1 niner. Here's down lock, flaps up, water rudders retracted. November 2 Bravo Whiskey, can you make sure to approach? Affirmative, short approach, 2 Bravo Whiskey. 2 Bravo Whiskey, make sure to approach, runway 20 right, clear to land. 20 right, clear to land on a short approach, icon 2 Bravo Whiskey. I'm just verifying, gears down and locked, flaps are up, water rudders are active. A lot of new pilots that I've flown with are extremely intimidated by taking off from a class Charlie, and specifically because a lot of them have clearance delivery, which is just one extra frequency or one extra step that a lot of class Charlies encourage VFR pilots to use. The busier class Charlies, like John Wayne Airport, for example, requires you to contact clearance delivery before you contact the ground. Less busy uh, class Charlies like El Paso, they just want you to contact the ground first. And the best way to know who to contact first, just listen to the ATIS. While departing General Aviation Aircraft, contact clearance delivery prior to. 
Good morning, clearance delivery. Icon 632, Bravo Whiskey at ACI Jet North. Information X ray. All clearance delivery is, is they're just giving you exactly what your clearance is upon departure. So they're going to give you where you're cleared to, your route of flight, your altitude that you're restricted to or not restricted to, your frequency to contact, as well as a transponder code. Icon 632, Bravo Whiskey, was it? Affirmative, Icon 632, Bravo Whiskey at ACI Jet North. I'd like to request VFR flight following to Santa Monica Airport via the LAX special flight rules. I'm an Icon Alpha 5 Slant Golf. November 632, Bravo Whiskey, turn left, heading 240. Maintain VFR conditions out of below 2,400. Advisory frequency with SoCal at 125.35, Squawk 0247. Clearance delivery is typically for IFR flight plans, which is why you see them at busier airports, namely Class Charlies as well as Class Bravos. However, as a VFR pilot, you can get VFR flight following with the same information that an IFR pilot would be getting. However, it's still a VFR flight plan. For the pilots who spend a lot of time flying out of and departing from uncontrolled airports, I find that it's actually easier to depart from a class delta. You're still listening to the ATIS, however, now you're contacting ground who will pass you off to tower and tower will handle your departure. Good morning, Hawthorne ground. Icon 632, Bravo Whiskey at the advanced air hangar. Information Tango, request taxi for run-up. Icon 63, Bravo Whiskey, Apple ground taxi to run-up via Sierra. And Hawthorne Ground, I come 632, Bravo Whiskey, run up complete. Request taxi runway 25. Two Bravo Whiskey, runway 25, taxi via Sierra. Taxi via Sierra, I come 632, Bravo Whiskey, for runway 25. Hawthorne Tower, I come 632, Bravo Whiskey, holding short runway 25 for a left crosswind departure to John Wayne. I come 632, Bravo Whiskey, I'm trying to make left crosswind departure runway 25 to take Alright, doing instruments are in the green. Airspeed's alive. 50. I've spent a lot of time training instrument students in the San Gabriel Valley, which is a very busy airspace when it comes to instrument approaches. Everybody from the whole basin typically uses the Pomona and the Paradise VORs in order to practice their approaches. And one day, a unique situation that I found myself in was I was flying an aircraft. The last three digits of the call sign was Niner Mike Sierra. At one point during this flight, there were four different aircraft who all had some variation of the same call sign. We were all shooting approaches, so the controllers are giving us all different vectors as well as headings to turn. And I was with a student at the time, and she did a great job of maintaining good communication, speaking clearly and enunciating, because otherwise it, you could easily see how a situation could develop from four similar call signs, shooting approaches, as well as all getting vectors at once. So the takeaway on that, being aware of other aircraft with the same call sign and using your full call sign with every single communication, not shortening it, and just verifying that the call that you think is for you actually is for you. And if you find that you are intimidated by more complex airspace or airspace that you're not used to, it may be a sign that you do need a little bit more training in that area and that would be a good opportunity to find a local flight instructor who is familiar with the area. I'm an ICON authorized flight instructor or IAFI and for all the ICON pilots out there, you can always seek out an IAFI in your area in order to review all of these things and help you feel more comfortable and confident. Get up, expand your comfort zone and your horizons in a safe way.